Okay, so we've got a problem. A ball is thrown up with a velocity of 45 meters per second. What is the max height reached by the ball? So when I read this, the first thing I see is that the initial velocity is equal to 45 meters per second. In addition to this, I'm going to state that up is positive. By convention, I'm going to choose that direction as my positive direction. Uh, the next piece of information is that it is implicit that the acceleration due to gravity is equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Notice that I this is kinematics, and I am sp specifically stating that the acceleration is a negative acceleration because my positive direction is chosen as upwards. The next piece of information is kind of hidden, and that comes from the ma statement max height. I know that at the maximum height, as my object is f um, moving up and then coming back down, at this top location, the velocity there is going to be zero. Now, if I show that to you in terms of a position versus time graph, it's going to look something like this. And the, the dt graph, sorry, the vt graph is going to look something like this. You see, initially, the, the velocity is positive here. That means the slope is positive here. Then, at this point in time, the slope here is 0, and the velocity is 0. It gets to the top. It pauses instantaneously before changing directions. And now, the velocity is negative after that point. And here, the velocity is big in the negative direction. And Throughout this entire uh, time, the acceleration is at negative 9.8, straight line. OK? Um, now, we don't need to go into a graphical analysis every time we do a question like this. But what I'm trying to make clear here is that this statement here, max height, relates to the final velocity being equal to 0. So this, these two pieces of information are connected to each other. Um, the other thing that I'm going to write down is, what am I looking for? So it says, what is the max height reached? So that means I am looking for delta d. Now that I have my information written down from the question, I can analyze my equations for constant acceleration, which are delta d equals 1 half at squared plus vit, v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2a delta d, and finally, v final equals at plus vi. Now, I don't have time provided for me in this question. The only equation that doesn't have time is this one. And let me see if I only have one unknown value. I know my v final, that's, that's 0. My initial velocity is given at 45. And my acceleration is negative 9.8. Therefore, the only unknown value in this equation is my delta d. So unlike younger students, I will not attempt to plug values in at this point. I will simply rearrange this equation here to solve for delta d and say delta d equals v final squared minus v initial squared taking the negative to the other side sorry taking the vi to the other side of the equation and then I will divide by 2a now I can plug my values in I have 0 for this 45 and 0 squared is still 0. 45 squared divided by 2 times negative 9.8. Notice that my numerator will be negative and my denominator will be negative.
providing me with an answer which is positive. And if you work that through your calculator, which I highly recommend you do because practicing with your calculator is important, don't just look at this and say, yes, I can do that. Actually plug it through your calculator and I think you should get 103.3 meters. So that is the maximum height reached by the ball for that question. Okay, here is another question and this says a ball is thrown up and takes 15 seconds to reach maximum height. How high will it go? Let's approach this problem from the same perspective as we did before. Let's just say up is positive. What are we given? Uh, we're given delta t is 15 seconds. Now I'm going to write that just as t because I know t represents uh, elapsed time, not time of day. And I'm also I also know that because it says again max height, I also know that at that maximum height, my velocity, my final velocity, is going to be zero. I don't have any other velocity given, but there is one more piece of information that I know, and I know that implicitly it's on the Earth. So I know the acceleration must be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. I can put the units down for these guys as well. Um, let me write down, oh, one more thing. What am I looking for? This is important. Don't omit that part. What am I looking for? How high will it go? So I am still looking for delta D, and I'm going to write that down as well. At this point, since I don't have any other information from the question, and I'm going to write down all my e equations for constant velocity. I know that this is a question that involves gravity, so it is constant, sorry, not constant velocity, constant acceleration. So here is my constant acceleration equations. And finally, there you go, those three. Now you should memorize those. Delta D equals 1 half AT squared plus VIT. V final squared equals V initial squared plus 2A delta D and V final equals AT plus VI. Let's see, well, we're looking for delta D. This equation has no delta D. So let's try <coughs> and not use that one at first. This one has delta D. Let's see how many unknown values we have. Do we know V final? Yes, we do. Do we know V initial? No, we don't. Do we know A? Yes, we do. Do we know delta D? No, we don't. Now this is one equation and therefore we have two unknown values. We don't know VI and we don't know delta D. We, can't, we cannot use this equation now to solve for delta D because you cannot use one equation with two unknown values. So let's go to the next one. It's got delta D, yep, A, so we're looking for delta D, that's our unknown. Do we have A? Yes, we do. Do we have T? Yes, we do. Do we have VI? No, we don't. Again, we have two unknown values in this one equation. We can't use this one either. So it seems as though we can't use any of these equations to solve for this problem. But I want you to understand that if you get to a problem of this nature, don't just throw your hands up and say, okay, it's impossible. No. What we need to do is we need to recognize that this type of a problem might be a two-step problem where let's see what we can solve for. If you come back down to this bottom equation, how many unknowns do we have in it? Well, we know VF, that's given. We know A and we know T. That means the VI is the only unknown value. Now that might help us work towards the solution. Let's solve for VI since we can figure it out and say VI equals, let's rearrange this equation, move the AT term to the other side 
and you'll get VF minus AT. Let's now plug our values in and solve for VF. Oh, sorry, for VI. VF is 0 minus A is negative 9.8 and T is 15. Okay? And when we plug that through our calculator, we're going to get a value of positive 147 meters per second. Notice a negative and a negative makes it a positive. So now we know that our VI is positive. Now that we have VI, let's go back and look at these guys again. And we could use this second equation here, but that means I'm going to have to rearrange it algebraically for delta D. Whereas this first equation, it's already solved for delta D. I can use this one and solve for the problem. So once again, by writing it down, 1 half AT squared plus VIT. And now I'll plug my values in. 1 half, one half that doesn't look like a very good 2, 1 half negative 9.8 times the time was 15 seconds. 15 squared plus 147, which is VI, times 15 seconds. Now let's plug that through our calculator. So this gives me an answer of 1,102.5 meters. Or, in other words, it's 1.1 kilometers approximately. Now, if you think about this, um, 15 seconds, right? 15 seconds of going, of, of launching straight up into the air. That's a long time. So I'm not surprised it's going to go to a height of one kilometer. Okay? This is, this is, uh, quite a fast initial velocity too, 147 meters per second. If you're wondering what that is in terms of kilometers per hour, you can simply um, multiply 147 by th the conversion factor of 3.6 to give you kilometers per hour. So if you go 147 times 3.6, that's going to give us 500 and 29.2 kilometers per hour. So that's that's a that's really fast. That's really fast. That's why it's going up to a maximum height of 1 kilometer. Okay, so our next problem is what velocity will this uh, object have? just before it hits the ground when it's coming back down. So it reaches a, a maximum height of 1.1 kilometers and we threw it or it was shot up at 147 uh, meters per second or 529 kilometers per hour and it goes up 1.1 K, comes back down and just before it hits the ground, what's the velocity? Well, if I draw a picture of this again we know that it starts at the ground, it goes up, pauses for a moment instantaneously and comes back down. So now let's consider at the top the velocity. Now that's the, this is now the final velocity. The top velocity is now the initial velocity and I know at the top, at the maximum height, its initial velocity is zero. So in other words, remember in the last question, the final velocity was at the top. Now the final velocity is at the bottom and the initial velocity is at the top, okay? This is what we're looking for now, but we do know another piece of information here. We do know that this distance is 1,102.5 meters. So that's my delta D. 
But is it really that value? Well, be careful here because it's negative. Maybe I should like see if I can move that over a little bit. Delta D equals negative. Why is that? Because it starts up here and it ends down here. And remember, delta D is equal to final minus initial, you know, right? So final position is here. Initial position is here. Final position is at 0. Initial position is at height 1102.5. So 0 minus 1102.5 is equal to negative 1102.5 meters. The way that I think of this is if something is moving down, it loses altitude. So a loss in altitude means the delta D is negative. Okay? Something that gains altitude means its delta D is positive. This is, of course, all assuming that up is positive, which I have assumed that in this problem. So, what are we given? We're given delta D. We are given VI. We are looking for VF. How can we solve this? We also know A, by the way, is negative 9.8. So let's look at this equation. Vf squared equals V initial squared plus 2A delta D. And this is this equation will uh, help us solve this problem. V initial, we have that. That's 0. Uh, acceleration, we have that. That's acceleration due to gravity and delta D we have that because we calculated that up here so all we need to do now is put this through our calculator initial 0 squared which is 0 plus 2 times negative 9.8 times a delta D of negative 1102.5 and remember this, the value that we get here is not going to be our answer because we have to take the square root. So if I go 2 times 9.8, and negative times negative is going to be a positive 1102.5. Now I'm going to get uh, 21,609, but I have to take the square root of that, and I'm going to get a value of for V final, 147 meters per second. Notice, I want you to notice something. So there's my final answer. And um, by the way, uh, here is something that you're going to have to determine from the situation, not from the mathematics here. And I'll tell you why. Because when we took the square root of uh, 21,609, I ended up getting the answer of 147. But here's my question to you, okay? My question is, is this velocity, final velocity, positive or negative? Well, look here. I'm going down just before I hit the ground. How can this velocity be positive? It must be negative. And yet, why did my mathematics tell me that it's positive? Well, listen, what is the square root of 21,609? Isn't it positive or negative? Right? Because negative 147 in other words, negative 147 squared is equal to 21,609, and so is positive. You must deduce that this direction is negative because it's going down. Also remember, this is the same velocity that it was shot up with. So that's important because we did not lose energy, any energy to loss of air friction because there is no air friction in these questions. Hope you enjoyed this video. 
One last thing that I'll mention in the video is that the time that it takes to go up is the exact same time as it takes to come down. So that could have also been a method used to solve this problem. All right, uh, see you next time. <laughs>